You and I know Sweden traded slaves, but in this first video in this series, I want to find out if any of those enslaved people who Sweden bought and sold were also sold to Swedes and shipped to Sweden. Let's find out. Swedish slave trade was banned in 1335, but resumed when Sweden acquired the trading post in Cabo Corso, Ghana in 1650. Some claim that slavery existed in Sweden even after the year 1335. They base it on individual cases. In any case, the scope was very limited. There is no evidence that Swedes used enslaved people for typical slave labor after 1335. Traveling magnets did bring enslaved people to Sweden though. They sold them to the Swedish nobility and the Swedish nobility primarily kept the enslaved people as a status symbol. However, between the 16th and 18th centuries, Swedes bought several enslaved black people abroad. These enslaved people were officially free in Sweden, but the reality was that the royal and noble courts and the armed forces used them. The most famous examples of such people were probably Gustav Baden and Antoine Zamor. Who were Antoine Zamor and Gustav Baden? Well, Antoine Zamor was born around 1736 and died in 1814. He was a Swedish court servant. He was part of Duke Karl's court. In 1784, Zamor started working as a kettle drummer on horseback in Duke Karl's library regiment. I wanted to find a picture of Zamor, but unfortunately, I couldn't find one. In my next video, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you Gustav Baden's full story. But for now, I want to tell you that Gustav Baden was also one of the first enslaved Africans in Sweden. <laughs> okay, I just can't help myself. Let me give you a little bit more about Gustav Baden. He was born either in 1747 or 1750 and was taken from his parents at a young age and sold into slavery. Later, Danish slave traders brought him as a gift to Louisa Ulrika of Prussia, the Queen of Sweden, in 1757. The Queen trained Baden as a test to see if the noble savage was true. The Noble Savage is a literary stock character who embodies the concept of the indigene, outsider, wild human, an other who has not been corrupted by civilization and therefore symbolizes humanity's innate goodness. So Queen Luisa Ulrika was interested in finding out if this noble savage truly existed, or if the black man lacked the qualities the white man possessed. You see, just like everywhere else in Europe at the time, many doubted a black man could learn to become as educated as a white man. But. Of course, Baden managed to learn plenty of things, disproving the idea that black men were savages and unable to become educated. Later, Baden married and became a famous and liked person in the royal court. When he was a kid, Baden did act more freely than other kids at the time, but that was mainly due to his unusual liberal childhood. The queen was friendly to him because she gave him freedom from corporal punishment in the home, which was customary for young royals and nobles during childhood. So if you were a royal child or noble child in Sweden in the 18th century and you'd be naughty, you were beaten for it. But the queen never allowed anyone to beat Baden. No one was allowed to lay a finger on him. 
good for him. Later, Baden also learned about the Swedish Lutheran religion and married Elizabeth Svart. There were more enslaved people who were brought to Sweden though. Two others were Daphne the Morian, who was baptized in June 1783, and the Morian Wicto or Pluto, who was baptized in January 1785. The latter was said to be from India. Both of them were brought to Björke Parish in Småland. And a few years earlier, three Native Americans were said to have been baptized in the presence of nobility and the general public in Sweden. Between about 1650 and 1850, there were Swedish officials and businessmen who worked in Sweden's colonies in West Africa and the Caribbean and who brought enslaved people to Sweden. The journalist Jöran Schütte documented one of those cases. Finally, the Swedish priest Lönnar was on duty on the island of St. Barthelemy in the Caribbean in the 19th century. When he went home to become a priest in Hudiksvall, he took two enslaved children back with him. It was doleful though because the two enslaved children didn't survive Sweden's cold climate. This information came from these websites. You'll find these links below this video. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel and watch this series from the start. Next Friday, I'll be back with a new video in my series on LGBTQ plus related topics. I'm going to be talking about all the anti-LGBT laws, all those anti-LGBT laws which have been ratified in America. So stay tuned for that video. To then. Till then, I only want to say three things. Thank you for watching. Take care. Please take care. And bye for now.